Hello, in this video we're talking about confidence intervals for a single mean. And so let's uh, take a look at a few notes here. The 2SD and theory-based confidence intervals for a single mean. We've got a couple of key learning objectives. We want to be able to assess the role of variability or error when estimating a parameter. And we also want to be able to distinguish between statistical significance and practical significance. So um, one thing to take note is that confidence intervals, excuse me, are similar, or for confidence intervals for means are very similar to confidence intervals for proportions. In fact, we have the same general form for a confidence interval. We have our statistic, and we add and subtract what we call the margin of error, a multiplier times the standard deviation of the statistic, that standard deviation of the null distribution. Our statistic is either p hat or x bar, we can use either one, and the multiplier depends on the level of confidence, with a 95% confidence interval, the most common one, having the multiplier of being right around two. Take note that the standard deviation of the statistic is the standard deviation of the null distribution and not of the sample. So that's one thing we're gonna run into here when we talk about for means. We are gonna have a standard deviation of our sample. That's a different number than the standard deviation of the statistic or the standard deviation of the null distribution. And we can see here um, the standard deviation of our statistic, we call it the standard error of X bar. We calculate according to the theory-based approach with this formula, S divided by the square root of N, where S is the standard deviation of the sample. So what we want in here is two SD or two times the standard error of X, and that's we're gonna use that formula to do that if we do it by hand. Let's try one out quick here, get a feel for how this works and how it's very similar to the other confidence intervals we've calculated. And then we'll take a look at how we can uh, use the applet to get it as well. Give a 95% confidence interval for the price of a used Honda Civic. If a sample of prices for 102 cars has a mean of X bar 13,292 and a standard deviation S of 4,535. So let's take a look here. What we want is our X bar, and that's the mean that's given there, 13,292, plus or minus what we call the margin of error. That's that 2SD idea. And so 2 times, and now the formula to help us calculate the SD, the standard deviation of the null di distribution is going to be s the standard deviation of the sample four five three five divided by the square root of n square root of 102. and so i encourage you to uh, pause the video and try calculating this for yourself i have calculated on a calculator the um formula for my s my standard error here two times and i'm just going to round it to 449 dollars it's a few cents more than that but we'll round it to that then when i double it that's going to be 898 dollars and that's my margin of error that's what all of this calculates for me my margin of error and so i've got 13292 plus or minus 898. So my confidence interval, 95% confidence interval, is going to be 13,292 minus 898. And I'm just gonna go ahead and punch that in. 13,292 minus 898. So that's 12,394. And that's the low end of my confidence interval. And the high end, I'm gonna go 13,292 plus 898, 14,190. So there's my 95% confidence interval. Let's talk for a moment about how to interpret that. 
we feel 95% confident that my parameter falls in between those two values. What is my parameter in this scenario? Previously, we talked about our parameter being a proportion, pi, the proportion of success in the population. Here, though, I'm not talking about proportions. I'm talking about means. So my parameter is going to be mu, the mean of the population. Mu is going to fall somewhere in there. The mean what? Here, the mean price of a used Honda Civic. So a great way to interpret this would be to say we feel 95% confident that the true average price or the true mean price of a Honda Civic in the entire population falls somewhere between 12,394 and 14,190. Let me just point out a couple of key, key ideas here. We are not making any kind of claim about an individual Honda Civic. You might be able to go out there and buy a really cheap, beat up, bad shape used Honda Civic for much less than 12,394. Or you might be able to go buy a barely used mint condition Honda Civic for way more than 14,190. We are making a claim about mu, the mean price. So the mean price of all Honda Civics, we feel, will fall somewhere in between there. Uh, the mean price of all Honda Civics, where? What's the population? We have very little context here. So presumably, we did some kind of reasonable sample um, from some kind of population. Maybe it's all Honda Civics in Tennessee or all Honda Civics in the United States, something like that. Um, then we feel like we're talking about the mean price for that whole population. So one last quick comment here. Um, this is not about the mean of our sample. Well, I don't have to say I'm 95% confident that the mean of my sample falls between these two numbers. The mean of the sample X bar, I already know that exactly. And I know exactly where that is. That's right in the dead center of this confidence interval because that's how I made the confidence interval. I took that X bar and I went up and down the margin of error. So we're not, we're not making a claim about the sample. We already know about the sample. We are making a claim about the whole population. Okay, uh, let's take a look at how, uh, how the theory-based approach uh, works for this. When we're using the central limit theorem, it requires that we meet two assumptions. Our sample size has to be at least 20, and our sample cannot be skewed. Um, we can have a small amount of skew in there, but if it gets too heavily skewed, it throws everything off. When we meet those two assumptions, then the central limit there and so says, hey, you've got a, uh, a null distribution that's shaped just like we expect, a T distribution that kind of has that bell-shaped curve. And, uh, and it also predicts what the multipliers would be for every combination of sample size and confidence level. So previously we talked about how there was basically a one, one multiplier for the 90, one for the 95, one for the 99. When we get into CIs for means, there's a different multiplier for every uh, different combination. And so basically, if we're using a theory-based approach, we use the theory-based inference applet. So let's try that out. Let's say we're talking about the same scenario. Let's see if we can calculate a 90% confidence interval for our Honda, mean Honda Civic price. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the applet. And uh, when I want to do a theory-based approach, I head for the theory-based inference applet. One thing to take note is that we have a scenario to take uh, precautions about, and we don't want it one proportion. We're talking about a mean price. So make sure you choose the right scenario whenever you use the theory-based applet. We looked at 103 cars. The mean X bar from our sample was, oh, excuse me, 102 cars. I gotta change that, 13,292. And the sample standard deviation, four, five, three, five. Okay, I'm gonna hit calculate and then just check confidence interval. 
there's the 95% confidence interval theory based. You can see that's very close to what we had. If I change this to 90 and hit calculate, it'll give me the 90% confidence interval. Let's interpret that quick. I feel 90% 90, 90 confident that the mean price for a Honda Civic amongst all the Honda Civics in the population, somewhere between 12, 546 and 14,037. How does that compare to the other one? That one is actually, uh, how does that CI compare to the 95? It's actually a little bit narrower. And that is just what we'd expected. We get this trade off. If we're willing to go with less confidence and a higher chance of an error, we can hone in a little tighter on our confidence interval. All right, so that's uh, confidence intervals for means and, uh, and the theory-based approach.